Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2016 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So please be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so let's take a read of the information. So we're going to start on top here. It says, Derek Davis, the sole proprietor of DD's Jam Shop, started trading on 1 Jan 2015 and provides you with the following list of balances which was extracted from his books on 31st March 2015. Okay, so he started trading on 1 Jan 2015, and this list of balances is for 31st March 2015. So only three months have passed, so it's not a full year. All right, so we have quite a bit of information here. It looks like the usual... Oh, look at this. They give us gross income. So we don't actually have to do sales, less cost of goods sold. They've started us off with the gross profit. How kind of them. Let's check out the additional information. So this first item here, talks about the depreciation on fixtures, fittings, and equipment, straight line method. Uh, one employee has not yet been paid wages, so that's an accrued expense. Water company has a credit of 160 for payment received in advance, that's a prepaid expense. Uh, Mr. Davis rents part of his shop premises to a tenant, so that's rent revenue, who owes 1500 in rent for the month of March, so that's an accrued revenue. And interest is to be calculated on the loan rate of 15% per annum. So you see that, 15% per annum, we are preparing an income statement for the first quarter of the year. Quarter of a year means that any percentages, so such as this interest as well as this depreciation, we can't use the full amount. We're going to have to apportion it or prorate it for the portion of the year which has passed so far, which is a quarter. Okay, so let's, uh, let me scroll up and let's start populating the income statement. Let's head up our income statement first. Let's so the Derek Davis income statement for the quarter ended 31st March 2015. Or maybe they should have been DD's Jam Shop. Okay, so let's start with the gross income, which is eighty-seven ninety-three. Let's put that inside of here. And well, we know we have some rent revenue, so let's head up, um, add other revenue. Now, before we jump in there, there is an item here, discounts. So we have two sets of discounts, right? The discount on the left-hand side is a debit, that's discount allowed. On the right-hand side, that's a credit. And that means that's discount received, which is a revenue. So let's put that in. And then let's talk about the rent. So the rent revenue here is 3,000. That's how much we've received. But again, if you look a little lower, it says Mr. Davis rents out part of his shop and is owed 1,500 in rent, which means that we have to add that 1,500 to the 3,000 already received, right? So it's an accrued portion. And what do we do with accruals? We add accrued portions and we're gonna add that to the gross income. And now we're gonna deal with the expenses, all right? So the transportation out is the first item I'm seeing here followed by discounts, we have wages and salaries. Don't forget, we have one employee who has an accrued wages. We're gonna to have to add that. Utilities, including water rates, 1180. But don't forget, we have to subtract the prepayment, right? And we have interest on the loan and depreciation, which we're going to have to adjust because it's only for a quarter of a year. So let's get those things going. So we're seeing the discount allowed 160, wages and salaries. So 4750 plus the 900 that we saw down here. Right. Then we have the utilities, 1180 minus the 160, which we saw here, the prepaid item of 160. Right. Following from there now, interest. Right. So the interest. So it says the interest is to be calculated on the loan at a rate of 15% per annum. So the loan is 2650. So you're going to find 15% of that and then multiply it by a quarter. Why multiplying by a quarter? Because we are only doing the income statement for the first quarter of the year, the first three months, and the interest is charged per annum. That 15% is for a whole year. Since a whole year has not passed, we can only show the proportion of the interest expense which has been incurred thus far. All right, similarly for the depreciation, we're gonna do the same thing. So it says here, the depreciation is 20% per annum, straight line method. So we're just going to multiply 20% by the 7780, the value of the non-current assets. And after we do that, we multiply that by a quarter because it says again 20% per annum. So we're going to total all those expenses and we're going to subtract that from the gross income to get net income of 5,767. Okay, so we have a few, I think, balance sheet extracts to do. Let's check those out. Okay, so they want a list of the current assets that would be in the balance sheet. Okay, so we will start with the closing stock. Right, so after that, we're gonna have the account receivable. Actually, let's populate it one time, right? So close in stock, account receivable, right? Now, we have, if I remember correctly, we have this piece here, which is the accrued revenue, as well as the prepaid expense. So we're gonna put those two items in as well. 
and don't forget we have the ever popular cash at bank and cash in hand so those two are round off our current asset list for a total of 11,388 now for the current liabilities that's a little easier we have accounts payable and we also have this one employee not being paid his wages of 900 so we just have those two items let's plug it in and we get a total of oh and 96 what was the 96 right that was the interest the interest on the loan Ooh, right, i almost forgot that right so that was accrued it wasn't paid because we didn't see it in the list of balances all right so that's that's a nice way they could catch you so you had to pay attention to that all right and working capital is simply total current assets minus total current liabilities giving us that difference there okay guys so that's about it for this question if you have any questions any concerns please let me know in the comment section below if you want to check out any more videos i'm going to put some cards up here subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time i drop a new video check out my website for free payaway handouts and as always thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time bye